hurt bad people, I promise. Trust me, Charlie. You don't have to be afraid. Please, I can help you. Liar, liar. Pants on fire. I don't want to hurt anyone. But it feels kind of good. Firestarter is about a family who's going to extreme lengths to protect their daughter, who has this telepathic ability from a group of people who want to harness her power. Their daughter's ability is new, and she's not used to controlling her power, and her parents really, really don't want her to use it. But through the film, we discover that they have these special abilities, and those abilities put them all in a ton of danger. Charlie is played by Ryan Kira Armstrong, and she has a special telekinetic ability that her parents have always encouraged her not to use. They encouraged her really to bury it um, down inside of herself, but it's bubbling up. And, and when she gets emotional, her emotions trigger that ability. So when she's scared or she's upset or when she's frustrated, it's really easily brought to the surface. But Charlie's inability to control her powers and the fact that evil forces want to learn more about it and potentially use it to hurt Charlie and others puts her and the people around her in a lot of danger. Oh, Charlie. Hey, stay with me. Stay with me. Stay with me. Stay with me. Just breathe. 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 That's right. I feel something. What? It's a dream come true, you know, it, it really Seriously. is. I think as, you know, actors, it's, it's really always exciting when you have a world constructed for you that is supernatural and has supernatural elements and, and lives in the vein of, um, you know, superpowers and special abilities that Stephen King does so well. Yeah. But what Stephen does is he, he roots everything in the human connection and in in this case it's about family and um you know ryan's or ch sorry charlie's struggle to grow up with these uh powers that are really coming into you know fruition as she anytime she gets sort of angry upset or triggered emotionally it's really about family and uh protecting one another and and coming to understand you know what it is to be a parent and uh, how to best look after your kids. And then we also get to go through one of the most crazy, psychedelic, fire-fueled uh, chase sequences of all time. So yeah. thank you, Stephen King, for, <laughs> for this. Yes. It's great. Yeah, Andy is a, he's a very resilient character. That's really, that's, that's very <laughs> that's well put. <laughs> um, he's been through a lot. I think that, you know, over the course of his life, he's, had a very tough go. I think he's kind of scarred from the experience of obtaining these powers through some pretty gnarly experimentation uh, in these MK Ultra-like experiments and um, has just by the skin of his teeth been able to escape and keep his family safe and away from these uh, government agencies that are constantly after him. So. He's now at this moment where he's trying to decide what's the best way to yeah. handle what's happening to his daughter. Andy and uh, Vicky have different abilities. They went through this pretty rigorous uh, experimentation process uh, in, uh, were given sort of different, we don't, we don't quite really know, but they were definitely tested on with different psychoactive chemicals and uh, start, these special abilities started to emerge. And, uh, together, I guess our child has developed sort of an even greater power. She, it's as it is coming into, um, as she's coming into her, her young adulthood, she's seeing it grow and manifest and that things are lighting on fire whenever she's getting angry, upset, or scared. And also, you, we're not really clear. It seems like, I don't want to give too much away of the film, but we're not quite sure of the limits of Charlie's powers. So Charlie's kind of developing powers that are above and beyond yeah. anything else that we've ever seen. I have, personally have a great relationship with my own father, and so I, I kind of got to just play the reverse scenario in my mind, and I, I thought about what my dad did or what my dad would do in these scenarios, because 
he is, he is quite like Andy, I think, in some ways. And so I had a lot to draw on from that, just in, in growing up with my dad. My first impression with Zach, which was this ping pong rally, which I lost dramatically in. Uh, I've been playing this for a long time. You're, you're pretty good. Don't <laughs> worry. You're pretty good. You'll get there. A little more training, you'll be right there. <laughs> um, but yeah, and he was there for me throughout the entire shoot, and if I had any questions, um, he was always there for me, and he was such a grounded actor and was so present and immediate, and it was wonderful working with someone like that. See, and she's such a pro, as you can tell. And like we, we, I, I remember on the first day we had some pretty serious scene work, and you were so good. I just got really, really excited about how much fun we were gonna have. There were some days when uh, you had your sort of power moments with yeah. the screaming and sort of you were letting the fire go. I still don't know how you did that. I'm like blown away. I, I think it's one of the most impressive things I've ever seen. So. Oh my. It's you too. The entire film. And so inspiring and so mesmerizing. All right. You smashed <laughs> it. <laughs> no, Charlie! 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 No! I think the most important theme of the novel is how do we manage our own pain? Um, and I think that uh, all the characters in Firestarter are wrestling with that. And what is great about Stephen King's work is he puts kind of a, a warped lens on human emotion. So it enhances parts of the continuum of human feeling, but they remain recognizable. So the idea that rage can kill is something that all children believe. In Charlie's case, it's true. Uh, and that metaphor is an extraordinary way to explore how we handle our own despair, anger, and suffering. Zach is a terrific actor and has always had range and has, I think, over the course of his career, been expanding it, if not really expanding it, demonstrating to the world how much he can do. Um, and so I think this sort of taking a, this role of a father uh, riddled with guilt, riddled with compassion, um, and willing to do anything to save his child was sort of the natural next step in the evolution of, of the roles he's taken. Um, and I just thought he was spectacular doing it. Our responsibility is getting her ready. Our responsibility is to protect her. I love talking with Keith about this project, about, about Rainbird, because I think we were both approaching it as, as fans, fans of the original novel, fans of that story. And so when we started talking about um, Rainbird, of course we were working from Scott's script, Scott teams a script, and Already, that was a radical re-envisioning of Rainbird. And I feel it was, uh, you know, like an updating of a, of a character from, I think, a different time period, a different, a different cultural moment. And I think the, the most exciting part of it is that Rainbird was more deeply connected with, um, with the shop and these experiments than in the, the original novel. One of the things that intrigues me or, and brings me back to King's work the most is uh, the development of his, of his characters. Um, believable people in extraordinary circumstances. And so I think he often takes uh, you know, a person who's on the verge of making a discovery or passing through some kind of liminal moment. Uh, certainly with Charlie, she's, you know, a, a girl that's becoming a teenager, and she's going through all these incredible changes. Zach did such beautiful work with Andy um, in exploring how a parent uh, manages you know, really complex emotions uh, you know, in their children. I was really, really, really impressed with how that, how that emotional sort of um, journey was handled. Uh, certainly, certainly in, in, their, in Zach's performance and, and with Ryan, uh, but also in just in, in the script, just understanding how uh, you know a parent would do anything um, to save their child. Needs to be on the run. Bad men are after us. Really bad. I hate living like this. We really wanted to be true to the book in a different way, 
that movie existed. People had that story. Let's tell it a little differently, but be truer to the emotional content of the book and the kind of uh, this dynamic between Charlie and the family and how her powers develop. And so we really focused on that. The family's been on the run from the people who created the drug Lot 6 uh, and the experiment that they were in. And they've been hiding. They've been hiding for years when the film opens. But Charlie's ability uh, and how it manifests when she gets upset has put them into danger. The shop knows where they are. And they've sent somebody named Rainbird to come and bring Charlie in. And that's kind of where we pick up. I love the really grounded kind of very natural scientific take on what these powers would look like, you know, how they would feel, the damage they could cause. And if you put a child with these powers in a very real world, what would happen? What would it look like? At the same time, that is how you can get these suspenseful moments of if Charlie gets upset, what's going to happen. It was that inner turmoil and emotion that Ryan was just amazingly able to summon up like on the spot. Um, I, it was, re, Ryan's audition, her first audition, I could see it. Ryan just had this inner sort of tension and this sort of combustion, for lack of a better word, um, that just kind of you could just see in her eyes. Um, and so, you know, the minute we saw her, we knew like she would just be ideal for this.